Welcome to the Casual Man's Guide to Reacting to the NFL Draft. This is going to be the first round. I'll, I don't know if you guys enjoy it. Maybe we'll do rounds two through seven uh, as they uh, you know fly. But didn't want to do a standalone Packers reaction because, well, we took a, a versatile lineman. <laughs> it's, it's not much excitement going on there. But we obviously start with Caleb Williams, uh, a guy that I don't even know who he was being comp to. I can't remember, but... It should have been Rodgers all along. I mean, I, I you know, you could say, oh, as a Packers fan, you want to say that, but very Rodgers-like, right? You know, taking the hero ball highlight play instead of, you know, taking the underneath and, and throwing on the run a lot when, you know, maybe he doesn't need to. But also, you have that spectacularness, which is why you love him. You forget all that other crap when you see the big play. Uh, so, obviously, the Bears, it was always going to be, uh, you know, Caleb Williams since... I mean, who even knows? Like, since the Carolina Panthers secured them the number one overall pick, probably. Jen Daniels, that obviously was a move that uh, was being talked about more and more over the last, like, month or so. As beforehand, it was Drake May. Uh, but Jen Daniels, obviously a... Uh, it's kind of weird because it's another, you know, throw-on-the-run type player. You know, I wouldn't say Justin Fields, but Justin Fieldy-ly, kind of. Uh, but obviously, you know, you're getting a guy that's accurate, getting a guy that has more with the legs than guys like Drake May or, or uh, you know, J.J. McCarthy. So it makes more sense if that's the route they want to go. And uh, obviously they had Heineke for a while who, you know, kind of did those things. Not the best passer in the world, but obviously did things with his legs. Uh, then Drake May, obviously a, uh, I wouldn't say a project, but more of a project than the first two quarterbacks. Uh, obviously trusting your reads is going to be a problem for him and, Man, is it ever going to be with the Patriots and their lack of weapons. But they need to go quarterback, and I heard there was a lot of really good trade offers. Uh, the Giants uh, and the Vikings, I believe, were teams that were trying to trade up. I would love to see what those packages were. I, I wonder if uh, you know we'll ever find out or not, but it would be interesting. Marvin Harrison Jr., B+. Plus. I'm, so I'm going to kind of like react to this uh, you know, kind of uh, thing on CBS, but... What's why B plus? He thinks uh, Malik Neighbors will be better, but it's close. I mean, if it's close, it shouldn't be B plus. I mean, you're you're getting a guy that was going to go either four or six, pretty much. How can they be close? One's A plus, one B plus. Uh, it's contradictory. But Marvin Harrison Jr. was considered the best wide receiver in this class, uh, deservingly so. Malik Neighbors is amazing too. Maybe even will be a better player than Marvin Harrison. Don't see why it's a B plus though. Uh, I think either one you'd be fine with at number four. The Cardinals needed weapons. I mean, they need a lot. They need a lot on defense as well. Pass rush is a problem. You know, corner's not great. I mean, they've got a lot of needs, but it should first and foremost come at the help of Kyler Murray. I mean, if you think he is your quarterback for the future, the franchise quarterback, which you paid him all that money for, get him some help. I mean, you're trading away all his receivers and releasing them or letting them go rather than gaining anyone. So Marvin Harrison Jr. and in a, a resurgence or step up, if you will, glow up from Trey McBride. Uh, Michael Wilson, you know, showed a little bit. It's not a bad receiver room. Might, you know, it'd be nice to see the offensive line upgrade a little bit. And once again, James Conner is a super underrated player. Joe Alt, you know, supposed to be uh, the best left tackle in the class. But, of course, as he stayed here, obviously Rashawn Slater is going to play left tackle. So you just assume he can make the move to right tackle. You take the best lineman in the class and, uh, you know, you, you figure it out later. Malik Neighbors talked about it already. In a class that didn't have Marvin Harrison Jr. would have been wide receiver one. Still, a lot of people would have considered wide, wide receiver one. But instead of going for a quarterback, you know, that maybe is a little bit of a reach, which we'll talk about at eight. They go with wide receiver and, you know, Daniel Jones, who's an okay game manager. He gets some help, I suppose. Latham, you know, a more true right tackle. It's ironic he talks about they need a left tackle. You know, maybe the Chargers and Titans make a trade at some point. But now they need a tackle. It was almost always going to be tackle. You know, we want to see Levis actually survive. Most of us do, at least. Uh, maybe not the division rivals, but we want to see him actually survive. So going offensive line makes sense. And then you had the true first absolute shocker of the draft. Getting a B- minus here. I think just for the, the, the choice itself. Unless it was, you know, one of the three guys, the top three, sitting there at eight. It feels like a stupid decision, right? It's not like he's a bad player, Penix, but you just you just signed Kirk Cousins. I get you have the, the whole injury concerns thing, but you're not drafting a quarterback at eight because you're like, oh, well, once if Kirk gets hurt? You're drafting him for the future, but you just signed Kirk to a four-year deal. I don't know the exact in and outs of the contract. I imagine there's probably some sort of out in year three or at minimum year four 
Uh, but at the end of the day, you're going for a guy, and it's funny because they, you know, reference, oh, the Green Bay Packers model, and, you know, it works, you know, you know, Rodgers and then Love. The thing is, Love wasn't 23 going on 24, right? Love didn't have the insane, you know, kind of scary injury concerns. So, and then not even just that, but then Penix is more pro-ready than a guy like uh, J.J. McCarthy, so maybe you go with the younger name. So by the time they get a chance to start, they're not already super old i know it doesn't matter that much you know you know some of the best i wouldn't say the best but a lot of quarterbacks now even that are average are making it to 35 plus so i don't know it just feels like such a reach at eight and once again you talk about that as well you know talk about the packers approach they also take their quarterbacks in the 20s you know they don't take them at pick eight when you just got kirk cousins and you're loading up on offense and you need pass rusher bad. I mean, I just... Dallas Turner. I, I don't know why that wasn't the pick there, and we'll talk about that later as the Vikings, they do it again. Roma Dunze. And a lot of people talking about, well, I mean, how much room do they have on this team? You know, they have... How are they going to pay all these receivers? They got DJ Moore and Keenan Allen and, and Odunze. I mean, realistically, I see... Well, not even just Keenan as a slot receiver, but... I see Keenan Allen as a guy that maybe they let go after this season. We've seen, you know, the Chase Young trade. You know, a third-round pick from the Niners, and they let him go in one offseason. A fourth-round pick is even less. So they could easily let Keenan Allen go if they have a really sick season. It was all worth it in the end. And, uh, yeah, Roma Dunze was always going to be the pick at worst. And then if they got really lucky, maybe neighbors. But uh, smart for Chicago, really just not trade up. I mean, they had options. They could use Edge, obviously, as well. Dallas Turner was still there. As soon as they seen Penix at eight, uh, they were probably really happy. You know, they were probably really happy, uh, and they were safe. Uh, of course, J.J. McCarthy might take a little bit of time to develop him, but he is going to a team that has a lot of weapons. Once again, you're drafted in the top ten. Most of the time, it's really bad situations, but realistically, Caleb Williams stepping into a great situation. Uh, Penix really stepping in a great situation if you consider, like, safety of his position right at worst unless he's really ass in practice or you know Kirk Cousins gets hurt and he has to come in sooner than expected you know he's pretty much safe throughout his rookie contract and then McCarthy obviously really good situation there with uh, some insane receivers and one of the best lines in football so uh, you can't hate it for McCarthy and it always felt like that's where he was going to go the Lions fans have to root against and for him it's a weird situation the Jets of course there's a lot of fans that were kind of confused by this. Obviously, Brock Bowers felt like a very attractive pick. If you're truly going all out for this season, last season, whatever, you know, it made more sense maybe to go Brock Bowers, but we've seen what happened with the offensive line. It's, it wasn't great. They have injury concerns, and with those injury concerns, causes more injury concerns for the more, quote-unquote, more important players like the quarterback. And uh, obviously, the uh, they need to tackle. You know, Tyron Smith, not guaranteed to play the whole season. You know, uh, on the right side, they got another older guy, Morgan Moses. So at the end of the day, I, I get it, but I feel like Brock Bowers would have been a little bit more of an attractive pick. They already have a lot of weapons, but you can never have too many weapons, right? The Tampa Bay Buccaneers with Tom Brady winning the Super Bowl, I think they'll teach you that. But see what he says here. Can't play the whole season, uh, the who season. Not a good pass protection needs to improve run block. This is an all-pro pick like Brock Bowers might have been. Yeah, I get that. I, I kind of agree but are you really trusting those tackles to stay healthy? I, I don't think so. And then pick 12, like you're saying here, talking about sees Drew Brees in him. I mean, there's some similarities, and obviously you talk about Bo Nix being very accurate, short to medium range, and uh, you know throwing a lot of passes in that short range, and you know that's what the, the Saints and now the Broncos want to do with Sean Payton. So it makes sense. Felt like an early pick. A lot of uh, people had him late first at the very highest. But yeah, I mean, you see Penix at number eight for a team that doesn't even need QB. Yeah, you're going to panic a little bit. Maybe the Raiders would have had Bo Nix there. I mean, there's so many teams behind them. The Saints could have taken one. The Seahawks kind of, I mean, Sam Howell's there, but I don't know what's going on there. Uh, you know, maybe even the Rams at 19 to, to future-proof for Stafford. You know, there's there's a lot of different teams behind them that could have went QB, trade up even to grab QB. And, uh, I mean, directly behind them, like we said, with the Raiders. And they felt like they, they have their guy, and you don't hate that, I suppose. And the receivers, they're okay. They're decent. Uh, then you go to Brock Bowers. Um, yeah, obviously they drafted Michael Mayer. It wasn't the best, obviously, uh, for them out the gate, but he'll definitely develop into a great player. But Brock Bowers, obviously you could see him as a slot-wide receiver even. Uh, he's just really good. It's one of those, like... 
you just can't. You, you know, it's best available pick. You're, you're taking the best available. Quarterback is still a question mark there, though, so I'm not sure what's going on uh, or what they're going to do. But, you know, you take the best available player. But obviously, the C grade, I get it, right? It makes sense because that is far from their need. But what are they going to do? You know, all the quarterbacks are gone. I mean, they can't take another quarterback there. It's, you know, you're really dropping off in talent then. But the Saints, they need to tackle, obviously. Latu, the Colts, that was the first edge rusher off the, the board, right? You obviously have those injury concerns. Uh, but definitely uh, a lot of upside, and they're they're gonna take the chance with uh, you know those injury concerns, and they really needed edge. It seems like they constantly miss on on pass rushers. They have like a season where like oh maybe we got our guy, and then it just never pans out. They get Latu, who uh, if he stays healthy is definitely gonna be their I suppose premier edge rusher. Uh, Byron Murphy, uh, they needed all the DT help they can get. Uh, I see that uh, Matabike uh, comp, and if that's the case, then yeah, that's really good. Obviously, he really shot up the board uh, late, and uh, you know, even though he's short, he's small. Aaron Donald, baby. I don't know, but obviously the Seahawks, they've needed uh, trench help for a long time since, I'm really trying to think, like sort of Michael Bennett, kind of more edge, but you know, big body, I suppose. And then Dallas Turner, I mean, the fact that he fell to 17 is crazy. The Vikings... They traded up kind of a haul, right? I'm pretty sure it was pretty significant. Uh, but, yeah, the insane play for the Vikings to make. And while they lose to Neil Hunter, they technically get better in the offseason. Huge tackle in uh, Mims for the Bengals. They have had a lot of bad luck with, you know, free agent linemen. And they don't want to risk it. They don't want to risk, you know, Trent Brown being the guy. Why not? Why not go for another tackle? Um, then you go to Jared Verse for the Rams. They needed... I mean, they need a lot. They need a lot, especially on the defensive side of the ball. They need a lot, and uh, Jared Verse was definitely the best remaining uh, pass rusher. Offensive lineman, you know, a lot of people thought that maybe it would have been uh, a center, but uh, opposite side of Broderick Jones was also a, a fill, if you will, and then James Daniels, of course, I, I believe played like a season or two at center for the Bears, so could move there, I suppose. Uh, but the Steelers for a while now, they've, they've needed to improve the line. Ever since, like, Le'Veon Bell left, the line has been pretty mid, to be honest. And then pass rusher for the Dolphins. Yeah, they actually need pass rusher quite a bit. That's a really good pick opposite side. You know, a lot of people thought maybe it would have been like Newton to replace uh, Christian Wilkins. But Chop Robinson, the value for pass rushes there. And then the first cornerback finally went off in Quinion Mitchell, who obviously is insanely fast. And uh, the Eagles, once again, they can't keep getting away with this. Brian Thomas Jr., what was the position they really needed more than Brian Thomas I mean, I guess O-line, perhaps, but a lot of them are already gone. Could have went with Graham Barton, though, I suppose, or, or Jordan Morgan. A little bit of a reach for Morgan, but uh, Brian Thomas is obviously a freak, you know, getting rid of Calvin Ridley. Uh, but they did gain Gabe Davis, who I think, once again, is a little, little, little overrated in fairness. Maybe they think so, too. But uh, they have a sick wide receiver core right now, so, I mean, not a bad pick. And then Tyrion Arnold, once again, the Lions can't keep getting away with this. Uh, Alabama DBs, they're cooking. So they, they get another one, and uh, yeah, the Lions have needed a corner for a while. I remember they made that huge push for all those free agent corners, and they were serviceable, but no one really took a leap out of that group, and you know, they, they need a new name. They definitely need a new name. And then you move on to the Packers, who always do a peculiar move, right? It's not like Jordan Morgan's bad, but at the end of the day, the Packers refuse to just get like a player that's like specifically really good at something, especially especially O-line. If you can't play multiple positions on the offensive line, you could literally be Joe Alt, and they won't draft you. They are that weird. They are that peculiar. They want an offensive lineman that can move around. They want their tackle to be able to play center if he needs to, which is ironic because this move kind of points towards, like it says here, that Zach Tom could move to center. I know for a long time in the offseason, talked about how Green Bay really loves Zach Tom at center, thinks he could be great there. Even though he was really good at tackle, uh, and then it's weird because I get it. Like, I, I mean, I'm pretty much damn casual at this rate. Uh, you know, a lot of people in the offseason talking about like, oh, Green Bay needs a tackle. They, you know, they got to replace David Bakhtiari. Two things. One, I don't think they realize how well Rashid Walker played in the second half of the season. He was like almost all pro level in the second half. I, I hated him in the first set half. But so did, I mean, I could make that argument about, I meant about the whole damn Packers team. But in the second half, he was great. And then they talked about replacing David Bakhtiari. Uh, Mel Kuyper said it best. I mean, he has to play for like three years. Three effing years, he said. But 
so you're not really replacing him anyways. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they projected probably to be a tackle. Maybe out the gate, just play him at right guard and see how things go. But versatility there and uh, makes you wonder who's going to play right guard then if Zach Tom moves center and he moves to tackle. I don't know. But, uh, you know, the ACL in 2022. But overall, you don't hate it. Graham Barton might have been more fun. But uh, yeah, I mean, they like their versatility. What can I say? And then obviously Graham Barton, um, center. Seems like that's where he's going to play. Uh, obviously, a lot of people talk about he, uh, you know, could play tackle if you really needed him to, but guard or center. And obviously, you know, another, another team where you talk about, oh, Ryan Jensen replacing him. Well, he hasn't played for so long as well. And the retirement really didn't even hit them because, once again, they didn't really get much out of him uh, after the whole, like, Brady run and whatnot. And then Darius Robinson could play edge, but obviously he's going to be an inside rusher for the most part. You can move him around, obviously, and they will, but for the most part, he probably will play inside. Uh, the Cardinals need a lot, right? Especially on that defensive side of the ball. Trenches, mainly. Uh, Xavier Worthy for the Chiefs. Why do the Bills allow that to happen? Who knows? Worry about, obviously, how you know, kind of small he is. Obviously, the drops. But they have a type, right? The Chiefs have a type. Marquise Brown and, um, I guess, Kadarius Tony, I suppose. Hardman. Uh, you know, Tyreek Hill, obviously. And, you know, they're going to get another type like that. Tyler Guyton, the Cowboys did kind of cook. Let's all just, you know, throw our biases to the side. They kind of cooked. Uh, they needed a tackle, and uh, they get their tackle, Tyler Guyton. And they got a trade down in the process. Then you have Wiggins, very good value with the speed for the Ravens. They need a cornerback. Even Humphrey, you know, not super consistent. Injury concerns as well. And then number two corner, they really need one. So Nate Wiggins makes a lot of sense. And then you have two quote-unquote reaches with the Niners and Panthers. But the big part about this is... The Niners going wide receiver in the first round. Of course, uh, they don't have a whole lot of needs. Maybe could have went D-line, maybe uh, Jerzon Newton or something like that. But does this mean that they are actually going to trade Ayuk and or, from what I've heard, Debo Samuel's name is being thrown out there? I know they utilize him quite a bit in the backfield, but at the same time, Christian McCaffrey's kind of taken over that role for the most part. So Christian McCaffrey might have like phased him out, if you will, and then Leggett, who I, I'm pretty sure I heard people talk about how he's going to blaze it at the Combine uh, before the Combine happened. And he did run really well for how tall he is. But yeah, it's nice to see that the Panthers are actually finally giving some weapons to Byron Young, uh, who just didn't really have many, to be honest. Offensive line's not great either, but one step at a time, obviously, and that helps getting a, you know, a nice big body, and uh, who is obviously pretty damn fast, getting DJ Chark back, if you will, maybe. But that is going to be it for the reaction of the round one. As far as, like, who do you guys think was the worst draft pick? Who was the best draft pick? I think, you know, Jalen Carter, like, last year for the Eagles, probably the easy best draft pick, like, of the, you know, of the first round, maybe even the entire class. And he definitely panned out that way. As far as, like, this draft, you probably got to say Dallas Turner to the Vikings at 17. I, it's pretty hard to pass that up. I mean, maybe Odunze at 9. But, like, there's not really many, like, guys that, like, super fell. Like, Quinion Mitchell to the Eagles is a great pick. I would say probably Turner or Mitchell are the top two, you know, best picks. I think Dallas Turner is just, like, the clear-cut number one here, though, all the way to 17. Most people didn't even think he was going to get outside the top 10. Uh, but let me know what you guys think uh, about your team's draft picks. Of course, this was kind of a weird draft, right, especially at number eight. Number eight just got wild. It got so wild. I don't know how you give it a B-. minus. For the position alone, based on you know the dynamics of how the offseason went for the Falcons, it's like a D minimum. You could become one of the best quarterbacks in the league down the line, and it's still just a D right now. It really is a pick eight. Once again, referring physically to the Packers' mo like motto or their their style, their method, but none of those quarterbacks came even close to the top ten, let alone the top twenty. And they weren't 23, 24 years old with injury concerns. I don't get it. I don't really get where the, the – like, is it just the Packers mold to sit a quarterback? I, I mean, once again, pick eight. That is crazy. And Kirk Cousins and company are rightfully mad. Falcons fans are in shambles. Bills fans kind of in shambles. But it could actually help them out in the long term, especially with some of the decent wide receivers still sitting there. Either way, if you guys enjoyed, maybe leave a like, subscribe if you're new. We'll have a rebuild a little bit later today. And that is pretty much it. Hope you guys uh, enjoy the rest of your day in the draft. And uh, hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, 